All right, I'll call this meeting to order for February 18, 2020. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the February 18, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the February 4th, 2020 regular council and the February 11th, 2020 committee of the whole meetings be received and approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Council Morio. All in favor? It's carried. All right, reception or delegations we have with us tonight. Uh, from the Livingston, Saskatchewan uh, municipality. We have the Deputy Reeve Mega and Councillor Frampton. And we'll discuss on fire protection. Okay, so go ahead. I guess the same as before is um, these were uh, sent us a letter about canceling our fire protection. Um, so we're here to basically plead again to see what, what we can do to continue with the fire protection, um, see what you guys uh, are thinking on, on what it would take to continue that protection. Um, okay, was there any discussion about that or, or what we had from the chief? Yeah, there's a note there from the chief. I guess had, had it been explained to our reason for for wanting to discontinue the the fire protection at all? Yeah, when I when I was here the last time, I mean, there was a few points that, um, you know, I, I get it that you just don't want to stretch yourselves thin, but uh, on that same hand, when uh, the last call out was ten years ago, I mean, I can't see us being a real burden for part of that. For I'm, I guess my question is is. How many times do you guys get called out a, a week? Is it once a week? Is it twice a week? Is it um, so? I mean, the the chat and I, you know, I mean, part of the argument was, uh, you know, well, we don't want to leave ourselves in a predicament that we're out there and something happens in town. Well, I mean, you know, playing the odds once in ten years, and if you're out in your community, like in town here, even if it's if is it. You know, I don't know what the number is, if it's once a week or twice a week or once a month, I don't know. But those odds of, of that being an overlap, I think, are very slim. Uh, and, I, I, you know, when I get the, the costs of Im improving your equipment, uh, you know, I, I, we understand that, that it, it, there is equipment costs and, and, and costs to be dealt with as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I can't see why we can't come to s something to, to, to continue the protection in the Division 4 of the Army of Livingston. Okay. I'm just Council reading the, the Fire Chief's notes, and, uh, and, and, so, and I appreciate what you said, absolutely. But what, what he suggests, I hate the word, but the suggestion is that we have fewer firefighters, we have uh, the geography side, there appears to be some communication issues that help happen out there. So I'm, a, I'm not speaking from assuming his concern is that if we were out there, and if those are big ifs, we mm -hmm. accept that. Uh, well, how would that reflect on our community coverage? And is that risk? Uh, and, and certainly, I think we have an obligation to help our neighbors, which you guys are. Well, and, and I hate to interrupt you. And to me, that. The area that I'm talking about, I also I always felt that we are part of this community because everybody that lives in that area does everything here. We've sent our kids to school here. You know, our our spouses or people, ninety percent of them all worked in this community, and they call Swan River home. That's you know so that that's part of it as as well. That it's a little disappointing that because of that geo. Because of the border, you may as well say it, that's that's all it is. It's the border, and that going into that into Saskatchewan five miles, it's too bad that that seems to be such a 
is your particular area a separate part of the total RM of Living Center? Are we talking now a very small part of the RM? Yeah, we're talking the Division 4 uh, of the RM of Living Center. That is north of White Beach, basically. Um, so that would be, I'm just trying to think what line it is. That's north of the, north of the Harlington Road. So what, what does the rest of your council think about, for example, the possibility of Division 4 subscribing to a program with the Town of Swan River and the rest of them not being part of that? Uh, well, see, the, we, we're getting fire protection for the rest of the RM okay. from Pelly. Okay. But for them, Division 4 is getting too far away for them to okay. supply us as well. They used to have an agreement at one time with Benito, but I don't think Benito used to come to Division Four either. No. So, and I think that's why, and I, you know, I don't know when they started with with the town to to supply that Division Four, and that's all the arm is looking for is that Division Four as uh, as coverage. I've been of the opinion it was all of Living, so I wasn't I wasn't privy counselor. Are you asking? I'm asking my, my peers on that committee. It's just was just the division, I guess you could call them words here, but it's division four. Yeah. So but uh, some of the issues, like as our chief says, there's some operational issues that are challenging because like our communication system doesn't work on that side of the border. Like there is the interprovincial jurisdiction differences that are difficult to challenge. Um, one of the issues that is raised that um, not pe many people are aware of is that if, like with spreading yourselves thin, going out there, um, if we're actioning a fire in your district and then an incident, fire, MVC, whatever occurs within our response area, and we have to bring in our neighboring fire departments, that's no longer a mutual aid response, that's a fee for service. So as we're uh, out in your area for a fee for service, if something happens here, we would have to pay another fire department to come and protect, do the service that we can't provide because we're out elsewhere. So, um, some of the other issues is like our equipment. It's, as we all know, ditch road is not the nicest road to get down there. So, sending down a three quarter of a million dollar fire truck down that bumpy road is pretty hard on it. So, uh, if we had different equipment or if we can look at some other stuff like that, that might be an option. Um, and I, the, the problem I have with that is, so now you, you actually have people in Manitoba that live 100 yards on a ditch road in the Manitoba side. So are you going to go to their place? Because actually the gravel road is, once you hit Saskatchewan, the, the, the road is better. So to me, that's that, that argument, well, is, to me it's, it's poor because so you're still going to service the guys that are living down that road. Yeah, so so with, with, with that, those are rate payers that are paying a fee that's like an insurance policy uh, mm -hmm. for fire protection. The current agreement that we have with the RM of Livingston, like yourselves, is <coughs> no funds change hands unless we respond to. So we have no investment into capital projects or maintain, maintenance or anything mm -hmm. like that. If, th if those dynamics changed, that could be a, a discussion that we can look at. So, yeah. um, but. Uh, and I mean, we do uh, we do pay a fee to the. I don't know if it's a town of Pelly or is it the village of Pelly that has this fire protection. So we do pay them a fee. Yeah, a fire department. And I mean, we used to do the same thing with uh, Benito. So now, now that that's changed, how that all works with Swan Valley West, we haven't dealt with them. I mean, since since I've come on and stuff. And like I said, we we are willing, I think, to. Uh, help some financially. Um, now, how you uh, deal with that? Is it per capita? Because, you know, I don't know, how are you dealing with, like, because now you are, are you are going up all the way to Birch River now? Yeah. Because, you know, and so, I mean, there's there's my argument as well. These are open Birch River, something happens in Swan River. I, how we're dealing with our other municipalities is we're taking, we're doing it based on assessment because, if you know, if you look historically, since even the early 80s fire house fires especially structure fires have gone way down mm -hmm. so we're eventually going to come to a point where we're, we're providing everybody has fire protection but 
previously we were paying on a, on a per call basis. If you had 90% of the calls, you paid 90% of the fire department. Okay. Now, now we're doing it based on uh, the value of what's being protected. So we're charging our we're charging Swan Valley West and Minnetonka's Bozeman based on assessment okay. of, of what we're prote protecting. So, so if even if they get no calls, they're they're it's just basically they're like an insurance policy. Yeah, so they're paying like a premium. Yeah. So. I'm of the, I guess I'm just speaking for myself, I'm of the opinion we, we should run the numbers with, to see what that would look like with, with Livingston, to see if that'd be something, a model they'd be interested in. Yeah. And, and I don't think we're going to have a conclusion of this tonight, you know, it's good, good to have this discussion, but I think that council's going to have to take this away and perhaps look at this and, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, talk maybe through one of our committee of a whole meetings or something like that to see what it looks like and then also have our fire chief there to have a, a fruitful discussion about it. I wouldn't completely say that the door is closed on it, but we'll definitely have to look at the whole thing and see what it what it means from our perspective anyways. I mean, and I've got no problem seeing, uh, off the top of my head, and I, I don't, I can't say what we're paying, like the, the village of Pelly for that fire protection either. But I mean, that's something, you know, I can look at and find out what our numbers are going that way for, for the rest of the municipality. I sure. think that's something that we could definitely look at. Councilor Gray and the Councilor White. Um, excuse my lack of memory, but is the agreement with Livingston now terminated? It has yeah. not been terminated. Well, we gave uh, notice, but we haven't actually terminated the service. Right. That's and that's what I understood, but yeah, I just want to make sure. It's been on hold in, in contacting 911 and stuff until this can be resolved and talked about. Okay. Yeah. So we're not in a pre we're not in an urgent situation. If there was a fire, we would still cover it for yeah. now, and and we just need to know that there's a deadline for coming up. Okay. Um, and and just a question that I just again, my lack of knowledge. Why wouldn't the highway is it 39 Highway 39? Highway 49. Highway 49. Why wouldn't the Highway 49 Fire Department provide service to the they, entire? They have 20 miles. Before you even get to division four. Okay, but we have twenty three or something. Fifty. Fifteen? Yeah. Oh, it's the same distance though. Yeah. I mean But for them to get up to actually into this far end of division four, like where I am, you're looking at uh, it's more than twenty five, it's probably almost thirty miles to get yeah. in like I live north of the ditch road. Okay, no no I, I, okay. And, I've got an idea of, of that, but it's, just, yeah. it's not that much difference. I'm just trying to yeah. figure out why you would want to get And it. it's it's a distance. You know, um, I'm sure you guys probably have, there is some scale of, you know, what your call out time is for a certain distance. Yeah. To, especially, you know, being a volunteer fire department, uh, Pelly, a lot of their <coughs> firefighters are rural, so they're looking at a bigger response time to get okay. to the hall as well. Okay, so, I, know, I have the answer. Yeah. Um, so, which brings me to the last thing. Uh, Councillor Delory is absolutely correct. We've, we've changed our model so that anybody who's a partner is paying some of the capital um, they're paying um, based on for lack of a better word insurance that's that's exactly the model we're using are you prepared to consider that like yes okay so if your total assessment was and uh, pulling numbers just completely out of the air i haven't got a clue what Livingston's assessments but if division four is seven million dollars and that means that you have to pay you know, seven million over a total of I don't know, 100 million. So you pay 7% of our total fire department budget. You, that's something you're prepared And it would be something like the numbers uh, just have to see, you know, what they are and, and we'd have to look at it and see if it's something we can afford. Okay. Councilor Glory. Oh, sorry, Councilor White. Then. Councilor. See, that, see, that's a bit of my concern, Mr. Megan. And, and we're all very frank here. Like, this has been going on for about two years. I personally have phoned the read at least twice. I'll get back, I'll get back. So then we get a little frustrated from our side saying, hey, we don't have, we don't have any proposal hmm. which well hey we gotta we gotta make a decision so I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable and I appreciate you guys are saying what you think is correct but I don't know that you can represent your council as a whole yeah I'm, I'm actually very confident we got yeah. that that's one thing that's happened with us is uh, pretty much all our council has changed over uh, we only have one kind of returning and we, we have a I think what we have now is a very good working council that wants to move forward with some of this stuff and get get stuff going so that we are we're we're uh keeping our rate payers into services that 
or we think they should do that. They deserve. Thank you. Councilor Gloria and the Councilor Gray. Um, I guess I not speaking for council, but I'd be interested if administration could prepare the numbers as as though I guess you'd have to uh, contact Livingston and see how they do their assessment in Saskatchewan because we do it over on our portioned assessment right. and see how they portion their assessment if it's comparable to Manitoba and I guess if you could if you could present some numbers for, for us and Livingston to see what that's going to look like. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Gray. It was similar. I, I was just going to ask administration if they knew what information they would need. Obviously, the assessment or that land values. Well, we need we would need the boundaries mm -hmm. uh, that that our fire fire service would be protecting. Yeah. And from that, I think uh, Terry would be able to get assessment from Saskatchewan for those those numbers. I'm sure. I'm looking at you, Terry. Back there. <laughs> I'm not sure we'll try looking up for Saskatchewan assessments or that we have to go online like now. I told you guys that. We'll, we'll certainly make an effort to yeah. get those yeah. Okay. And our, so, our, so our <coughs> administrator now seems she's very capable with this. And well, let, let me take it one step further because um, our administration, certainly I'm prepared to ask that they um, do an assessment. But I, I don't think we should be following up trying to figure out what the assessment of the land space is or anything like that. I think that needs to come from the arm of Livingston. Mm -hmm. So so let me ask you a more blunt question. I'm even more blunt than my <laughs> counselor to my right. So how long will it take your administrator or your council to get those numbers to our administration? I can't see well, why it shouldn't take her. So if we said March 15th? I, I can't see why not. Okay. And, and I know she's right in, in the midst of her audit right now, but okay, so the ministry is going to this. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to certainly ask that we get it, get what we need to use quickly as possible. Yeah. But because Councillor White's right, we actually need to have a decision because mm -hmm. we've given notice. So what we need is from Livingston a response that says, "Here's the information you've asked for. Here's what it is, and then we can give you an estimate that says." Based on your values, this is your share of the total bill. Here's where our total bill is. This is your share. If you're in, you're in. If you're not, you're not. Doesn't matter. Does that seem yep. okay? Deputy Mayor Tony. I think that we have a consensus of uh, looking at at dollar wise. My only concern, um, and I don't know enough information on it, is the communication and the safety of our of our team. Um, when we do cross the border, what does that look like in terms of communication-wise for our team? I don't know the answer, but I think that would be along the lines of finding out what costs are associated with that because even if we did agree to the numbers, I wouldn't be in favor of wanting to send our team out there with, with in, in a danger zone, so to speak, without any method of communication. Um, whether what that looks like in terms of radios for there or payment of another channel, whatever that is, I think that's something that we can that we need to explore as well, along alongside with the rates and, and things like that. So there may be some additional costs for communication, and I think that I mean if you're willing to explore the the cost of fire department as we're talking, I think communication needs to be a part of that as well. I think you said these were on fleet net or something. Well, they're, they're switching up. The whole province of Manitoba is being switched over to something new here yeah. right right this spring. So, yeah, our, our system part of the information you'll need. Oh, sorry. I yeah, like our, our province, like our fire department, will switch over in October is when they go to the new public safety communication network. Um, there's under the new system, there's some interagency operations that's lacking in the current system to the new one that they might be able to talk jurisdictionally but as for the communication they might be where you uh, give them communication equipment that works in the Saskatchewan side on, oh, on in their public safety network that they can talk to the Prince Albert comm center and things like that so um, that might be a logistic that has to get worked out but um, they have for calls up there they have a portable that works on the Saskatchewan side because ours once we're out of the range of the Manitoba tower they lose com uh, you know, capability to talk to our comm centers. So, and as Councilor Tony says, that if there comes all of a sudden 
uh, an emergent situation where someone does that, they're out in, in a dead zone. That's, um, yeah, you know, and I, and I mean, I, I, you know, I understand that because I deal with the self service in Saskatchewan, or communication is, is, Less well, I call it, <laughs> I call it the sometimes Saskatchewan service. You just, and it's, it's, it has nothing to do with the cell phone. It's, it's the border because I can have full cell coverage on my phone, but because the phone knows where it is, it won't let the phone work. You can have full bars, full LTE, but because you're a mile inside Saskatchewan, it just doesn't let it work. It has nothing to do with signal strength or anything. It doesn't end because there's an invisible line at the border. Mm -hmm. It's but the phone knows where <coughs> it is. You know, it's it's frustrating. I mean, we've dealt with this for for years. And it's... All right. So then, basically, what I heard tonight is that uh, we're I think we're willing to explore this. We'll wait for some information from your office yeah. to our administration. We'll look into the communication thing with the fire chief, and we'll see where we can take this. I, I guess just so one other more updated thing to, to run the numbers because we're gonna have to run these numbers anyways for our other shared service negotiations we need the update assessments for all three municipalities like Minbowas and Swan Valley West <coughs> in addition to Livingston and for doing first that's also um, no we don't provide any protection in that that we're going to Burke. No, uh, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know uh, like we go just no, no, north of Bozeman. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Right the bridge. So mm -hmm. somebody asked. I thought you said, yeah, "Are, yeah, are you guys going to Birch?" And somebody said yes. And I thought, "Oh, well, that's a surprise <laughs> to me." But what do I know? I'm not on that committee. Birch River has their own. Yeah. So they can confuse everybody. <laughs> no problem. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was there anything else that you had to? Oh, uh, that, that was it. Uh, I mean, we, I wanted to, you know, just get back and, and make sure we can kind of keep this open and find out, you know, what it would take to keep that. Okay. Keep us, uh, you know, that that division for into into some fire protection that is reliable and within. So, so, just a question: We haven't had a call out there in ten years. So, you guys have no, had no grass fires, or and that was the last one was a grass fire. Was it? So, how case? come the, uh, these guys next door have grass fires every year? Maybe they're happier with matches. <laughs> <laughs> I think you answered your own question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else further, then uh, again, I thank you for coming in, and uh, we look forward to hearing from your office. Okay. Well, thank right. you for that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next on the agenda, four point two, we have our CFO and the auditor uh, in regards to the Swan River Handy Transit Van two thousand and nineteen draft financial statements. Welcome. Does anyone need a printed copy? Oh no. Oh. Thank you. <clears throat> I would love a printed copy, Mr. Ganita. If you have one, I'll come and get it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. No. Turn a few pages into the statement of financial position. <clears throat> it lists the financial assets, liabilities, and non financial assets. There's a grant receivable from the province of Manitoba. They advance uh, some during the year, and then the rest is paid once we submit the audited financial statements and the annual operating report. So we're expecting just under 13000 for a grant from the province. Liabilities, there's some accounts payable on crude liabilities and the non-financial assets are the tangible capital assets, just under 138000 Next. Page uh, shows the statement of changes in net financial assets and accumulated surplus. And so you see the opening balances and the changes during the year and the ending balances. The next page is the statement of operations, it shows the revenue and expenses. So the total grant from the province is just under $23,000. We had budgeted for 
the town of Swan River contributed just under 23000 as well. And user fees brought in just under 15000 a little bit more than budgeted. And some interest income, so the total revenue across all the funds for 2019 is 64000 up from 52000 in 2018. Under expenses, uh, dispatcher and drivers, just under 42000 a little over budget and up from last year. And uh, various vehicle expenses, administration, charges from the town, 5000 Audit and rent to the town for the, both the shop and office space, 3000 And amortization of the capital assets. Total expenses just under 71000 up from 62 the previous year. And so the handyman ended off the year with a $6,600 deficit. Next page is the statement of cash flow that shows where the cash comes from and goes to. The handyman doesn't have its own bank account. It, it, just the money's back and forth between the town. Next page is the notes to financial statements. The first note states it's a not for profit organization. It was controlled by the committee of the town, receives funding from the town and the province. There are significant accounting policies down at the bottom. The storage building is amortized over 25 years, the handyman's over seven years, and other equipment over five years. On the next page, note continuing the significant accounting policies, uh, in the middle of the page, measurement uncertainty, there's some estimates. financial statements. And note three shows the calculation of the provincial grant receivable. So it's uh, equal to 37.5% of operating expenses. And the province uh, issues in advance equal to half of the previous year's grant. So total grant based on 37.5% of expenses is just under 23,000 and the province advanced 10,000, so the receivable is just under 13,000. Next page, uh, just highlight right at the bottom, economic dependence, the organization receives a significant portion of its funding from the province and the town, so it's economically dependent upon grants from them to continue operations. The next page, note seven, related party disclosures. Uh, just skipping to the bottom, the organizations, committee members consist of members of council for the town, and as such, the organization is controlled by the town. So the amount due from the town has no terms or conditions. The grants from the town, the grant from the town is calculated as total budgeted operating expenses net of budgeted revenues from other sources. The administration and rent expenses paid to the town are measured at the approximate value of those services provided by the town. And the amortization expense recovery is calculated as the approximate portion of amortization of the mini handyman used by the town for bylaw enforcement and animal control. The chartered professional accountants have added uh, these related party disclosures. So we have to disclose any transactions between the related party and the town as a related party and how those transactions that are measured and determined. So that's all in that note. And then the last page is the schedule of tangible capital assets that shows the various capital assets that the handyman has, opening balances and the amortization recorded 
12, just under 12,000 of amortization expense in the year. And so that book value just under 138,000. Are there any questions before I turn it over to the auditor? Any questions? Okay. I do. Oh, Councilor Gray. I, I just want to um, make sure I'm understanding something. I think I do, but I'm not, I'm not that smart sometimes with accounting. So our, our budget to the expenses for the year were 58524 That's from uh, page, uh, I know it is, page five. Yeah. But our total was 70799 But as I see it, the single largest item there was $11,658 of amortization. Is that correct? Yeah. And municipalities uh, still prepare their budgets based on the municipal act. And so amortization is not an expense for the municipal act, but it is an expense for the public sector accounting standards. So the, the budget is basically on a different uh, accounting basis than what the financial statements are. Okay. Um, then my question is, the 11658 was something that we either did or could have anticipated? Well, it, it's, it's just spreading the cost of all no. our capital assets over the... Yeah. I know what it is. I'm just I'm just making sure it's something we could could or should be able to anticipate. So when we're doing the budget, yeah. somehow we need to account for that so that we're um, building for it in what some way, whether we increase the fees or we increase our grant or something. Is that a fair statement for this year's? But I'm not worried about this. This is fine. But for this for for this year's budgeting process, we need to because we shouldn't be having a loss in something. We should be if we can recognize it in advance. Yeah, that can be incorporated. Okay, that's it. Okay. Any others? <clears throat> okay. Ms. Chess. All right. Good evening, everyone. We'll just go to the beginning of the financial statements to the audit report. So we have audited the financial statements at Swanever Handy Transavan, which comprise the statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2019 and the statements of changes in net financial assets and accumulated surplus, operations, and cash flows for the year that ended, and notes to the financial statements, including a summary of the significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the organization as at December 31st, 2019, and the results of its operations and its cash flows for the year that ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the organization in accordance with ethical requirements that are relevant to our audit of the financial statements in Canada, and we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with these requirements. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. We'll jump into the next page, the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance but is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material if they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of these financial statements. So that basically sums up the auditor's report. And I also have the audit findings letter to go through as well with you. 
So the audit findings letter uh, just states the status of the audit. We have completed the audit of these financial statements with the exception of the following items. Completing our discussions with the committee and, and obtaining evidence of the committee's approval of the financial statements. And once these items have been completed, we will date and sign our audit report. There were no significant risks identified during the audit engagement. There were no changes to the audit plan. We have not identified any other significant matters that we wish to bring to your attention at this time, and there were no significant difficulties encountered during our audit. There were no significant changes in, in accounting policy. We did not identify any alternative accounting policies that could have been more appropriate in the circumstances, and we did not identify any significant accounting policies in controversial or emerging areas. The following significant estimates or judgments are contained in the financial statements. The estimated operating grant receivable for Province of Manitoba, as Terry mentioned, and the book value of the capital assets. So based on the audit work that we performed, we are satisfied with the estimates made by management. We did not identify any financial statement disclosures that are particularly significant, sensitive, or require significant judgments that we believe should be specifically drawn to your attention. We accumulate any uncorrected misstatements identified and communicate them to management. We did not, however, identify any misstatements during our audit and did not request management to correct any misstatements. And lastly, we did not identify any control deficiencies that in our judgment would be considered significant deficiencies. We have requested a written representation from management in respect to the responsibility for the, for the preparation of the financial statements in accordance with, can with Canadian public sector accounting standards for government not for profit organizations. And we did not identify any other matters to bring to your attention at this time. And I'd just like to thank Terry for all the assistance he provided to me during the audit. Very and good. that's everything I have to say. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, no questions. Thank you uh, to you and your team uh, working with Mr. Ganita and the and the rest of the office staff here, and, and Mr. Ganita, and uh, good work on this here as well. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Do we need a motion to accept the audit, I think, I'm assuming? Uh, no, I don't think we need one right now. It's just a draft right now, right? Wait. Yeah. Or do you need you'll, do, you'll do it later in the, in the meeting, right? So you okay, you already have one on there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't... And then once we receive a copy from that Terry, we'll sign the audit report. Okay. It's yeah. here? Yeah, it's down on uh, 8.3. Or 8.3? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> see All right, thank you. Okay, okay so moving on, 6.1. Um, resulted the invitation letter from the Swan Valley School Division to the strategic planning session being held on April the 20th, 2020. Be received this information that's an invite to anybody that wants to attend that. So moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Gray. Does, doesn't it actually ask us to send a representative? And, and the reason I ask it is if they're just asking any councillors to come, that's fine. But if, if it's a representative, um, it does ask for a representative. There, there are a couple of things that are, that are implied by that, in my view. Um, the first is that we should you know, decide if we're going to send somebody who's going to speak on behalf of council. And, and the second piece is that we should then discuss it so that that person speaking actually on behalf of council having discussed right. it. The difficulty is that they haven't sent any materials and, and I, I'm not sure exactly what their intention is. But what, it's a little of an unusual process, I'll put it that way. Um, because normally if you were going to have somebody critique the strategic plan, you'd say, here's our strategic plan, here are the supporting documents, come and talk to us and tell us if there's things that you think as a community we've done differently. That would be a more usual thing, but I, I'm not saying it's not good, I'm just saying, I think we should need to think about whether we're going to do it, but we only have till March 23rd, okay. ostensibly. I, I was thinking about attending it, because the letter came to me, but I didn't think, well, you know, it may be away, but I, that's why I sent the letter to you just in case if we have backup. That's a good point that you bring up that what is the information or what are we looking at? So I guess I could maybe reach out or maybe you can reach well, out. That's what I was just gonna ask. Do you want me to get a hold of John and ask him if they, they have any any uh, information for this? Right. 
and if they want, if, if it's open for whoever wants to go, and, and it, because we should talk, uh, I think, if they should send it, because clearly our, our own strategic plan stresses the fact that we're, our, our educational facilities, which include UCN, but also include Swan Valley School Grid, which may or may not be impacted by the um, school report that's supposed to come down before the end of March. Um, and, um, and obviously that will be an important piece of what we're doing as a town, but we should discuss it as a council. Councillor White. One of the statements that said there, if uh, if you can, uh, closer to the end, feedback will be sent to the participants attending along with an agenda. So I'm assuming that means once oh. it gets closer, they'll send that to us. Maybe. I imagine they're waiting for the provincial review, which should be out next week. We'll look up the next week. So you can reach out to uh, the superintendent then. As Do you want me to confirm that somebody from the town will be attending? Not who, but someone? Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Think so. I think we should. One or two, you sure. know, if that's what they can allow. Sure. Okay. But they've opened it up to the general public, I saw in the newspaper. So. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? No. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the 2019 year end report and financial statements from Swan Valley Settlement and Immigration Services Incorporated be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? I guess on that, Councillor Gray, they have a, a name change. Uh, yeah. And they also on. now have incorporated uh, the PAW into their organization as well? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, it's more complicated. There's a, a bigger project that's going, and so it's it's focused in Swan River, but they also did the PAW, because the PAW has not got anybody, didn't have anybody to formulate, formulate it. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out over the long run. It, it seems a little strange for us to be operating in the PAW without any of the PAW participation. And so, uh, and it's not exactly true, because they have some people that our staff deal with from settlement services, but not um, any board participation. So it's a, it's a, they've got a sort of an advisory committee. It is, a, it is a strange circumstance. So I, I think that's going to play out. <coughs> we'll have to see how that plays out. Now, we had talked about realigning ourselves to be more connected to the north, and this plays into that. And so I'm particularly encouraged by it. And I think we should follow up with that. Yeah. And who knows, maybe it'll evolve into something of their own, you know, yes. over time. So, okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Carried. <clears throat> I resolved that the letter dated February 11, 2020 from Association for Community Living, Swan River, be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resulted the invitation from AMM to meet with the council on March the 19th, 2020, be accepted. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion. So everybody is aware that that meeting on the 19th. Thursday. Pardon? So Thursday. Is that right, the right. Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.5 result of the letter concerning a proposed CT scanner dated January 30th, 2020, from Minister Cameron Friesen be received the information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Amorio. Discussion, Councillor Deloria. Have you had any uh, success in getting a hold of the individual referred to in here? Yeah, I actually reached, <laughs> I reached out today again and they told me that she would be able to maybe get back to me tomorrow. Okay. So hopefully we'll have a, uh, a discussion tomorrow afternoon about that. So yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Any other discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Are, are, are we going to talk about it in a different con Like I, I don't think we need to talk about it here, but are we going to talk about it at either the committee level or yeah. later tonight or sometime? Just, I mean, the letter is, it says no. So um, that's yeah. it's a nice way of saying no. And so I, I think we need to talk about that more. I mean, I'm sure we can accept it, but. 
Councilor Delorier. I, I guess I would take the opposite of this letter. Usually when we get a letter, you look at the Justice Minister's letter, that's a letter that says no. When they refer to you to one of the mandarins, to one of the bureaucrats, that's usually a good sign, I would think. That, okay. That, I, I take this as a very positive <coughs> I, I, letter. I, I feel this kind of this in between both you, you uh, councillors because when I when I read it, I thought, what does this really mean? You know, does it, it could you could read it be something positive, or you could read it say no. You know, so like if you want an example of a no letter, no, no, read no. the letter from Minister Cullen. That's well, a no I've, letter. I've got, I've got Minister Cullen's letter in mind too, um, but. Uh, when added to Minister Peterson's comments and so on, uh, I, I it seems we're a long ways away from a yes. I, I, I'm not saying it's not possible to get the yes. I just it doesn't look to me like they're building the case for yes. So I, I just what I what I meant was I didn't I don't know the answer because it's not as crystal clear as some of the other answers, but. Um, I think we need to th sit down and talk and strategize about what, what that means, more than just talking to some um, low-level bureaucrat. And just one other thing, uh, I, I think, with respect, Your Worship, um, that that's something we should have administration do, um, because it, it, impa it impairs the way we would end up with negotiations in due course. Um, and the reason is that at some point we're going to need to challenge Whoever the Minister of Health is, whether it's this Minister of Health or another Minister of Health or another party, this matter, at some point we'll want to deal with that. And, and if you're the person who's been negotiating with the um, blind people, it becomes you and them and the Minister as the, as the uh, arbiter, whereas if you're independent, it's two equal people. So I just, I think that's it's my view, but I leave to you, you're, you're fully entitled to do it how you want, but, but my advice that. is to pass it off so that we have another line. But the, those are the two things I would say about that letter. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. The result of the letter in response to the Town of Swanner's support for the Concerned Citizens Association of the North Park Lands proposed supportive residential facility be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen, discussion. I think that letter is very no. clear. <laughs> where 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 they decide to put those uh, buildings or those uh, mm -hmm. facilities is yet to be determined. I'm sure, but well, Councilor Gray, I'm not so sure. I mean, uh, I mean. I've got, I've got something under my uh, report of concerns in terms of documents closing the, the jail, and especially because of our position, and, and I, I think we need to talk about that in terms of how it impacts us, because it's going to impact us. Um, one of the things they did when they announced it was said that they're going to put a lot of the budget that they are mentioning here into uh, Dauphin to offset the cost, I'm told. If that's the case, the odds of us also getting a significant chunk of money seem more remote. So again, I think we need more information, but I think we need to set it up someplace to discuss it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And further discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Comments? Questions? None? Councillor Gray. <clears throat> it's my, I'm back. Well, I was going to say, welcome back. <laughs> um, I had a question from um, a, actually several citizens that the snow, apparently there were sidewalks being cleared on Monday. Do we have people come in on Monday to clear sidewalks? Not that I know of. Can we the right uh, guys I can, can, Well, I, I'm just I'm telling you that that we had at least two people who said while they appreciated the fact that the sidewalks were being cleared on Monday, they expressed concern that um, on a Monday, which would be time and a half plus another day off, um, that we would be doing it. So just if you can just check. You yeah. know the area that certainly I do. Okay. Like Third Ward, Sixth Avenue. Now. Okay. Maybe share that with Mr. Poole, and then and then he can. 
Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Maybe it was somebody else. I don't know. Councilor White? Uh, relative to car wash, it's fueled my mind. Uh, who do we buy our gas off and do we put RFPs out for gasoline purchases for the uh, town? Uh, currently, we get bulk fuel from co op. Uh, we we aren't really doing an RFP like for, for fuel pricing because they change from week to week. We determined that was pretty useless. So what we're doing is asking the AMM to give us a fuel analysis on our use and seeing what what price reductions they can give us compared to our bulk purchases. And then we'll compare that to our annual rebate we get from the co-op. And okay. we'll see whose projections are cheaper. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Gray, just two things. Um, the first is uh, in the in the check summary. There was a check for um, landfill cleanup. Is that a continuation, the last payment of all of the cleanup from the summer, or is that are we got more problems? No, that was a missed invoice from a contractor. Okay, good. Um, and step two of the grievance is the one before arbitration. And are we? Is that something we need to talk about later? Is there any reason to worry we, about it? We can give you an update. Yeah, we had Absolutely. a meeting today. Okay, so we should, we should probably camera, do that then? at the sure. camera session. Okay. I just noticed it, and if, if it's already resolved, then we don't need to hear about it. But if it's going further, maybe we should. May or may not go further. Then we should. We're working on that. Okay. In my view. Okay. Uh, I was also, I, I wanted to ask council if you guys would be interested in hearing uh, free presentation from uh, Associated Engineering. Just on, on Lagoon Systems, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, would Council be interested in hearing an hour presentation from Associated Engineering just regarding lagoons in Western Canada and their problems? <clears throat> We're going to have to do something with our lagoon, so it's probably best just to hear it from, from someone about it, so okay. more information for us. Uh, it will... Unfortunately, it will have to be on a specific date, and it will be during the day, so whoever can make it kind of will, will go. But uh, I didn't write down, down the date. I believe it's March. It's right away. It's uh, March 15th, I believe. But I'll, I can email council uh, when it is and what time. <clears throat> okay, so you'll confirm that to Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not on a Sunday. I could be wrong with the date there. Okay, good. All right, for the discussion, Just two more questions. Councillor Gray. Um, one is I saw um, attendance examinations for discovery. Was that, that's the slip and fall thing yeah. with the thing? So and, and is that concluded now with discovery? No. We still have more discovery? There's, well, I, I don't know if they're, they're going to tell me. They're going to let me know. Wow. I can update you. In yeah, well, we should talk about that. I, I, I'm taking it that's the insurance company who's covering it in any event. So we. We don't have to really worry about it. And just, I'm not sure where it is, so I'm going to ask the count, but where's our lawsuit with pool? Have we any update on that? Is that coming out of yours, Charles, or yours, Patty? We could probably do that in camera then. Can we do that in camera? Yeah. It's only in camera, sir. <clears throat> is it? Oh, I didn't even see it. Jeff could be in camera. Yeah. I don't know if it was that, but it's, it is now, so. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Is that everything? Yeah, that was everything. Thank finally. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. I, I, no, I just, I no need to apologize. All right. So, uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven two one. Result of the January two thousand and twenty protective services report be received as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Gray. And this will play into something Charles told us before I left in the meeting before, but the total amount of time that was spent on protective services was 144 man hours for a whole month. Eight call outs. Yeah. That's, it's just that <coughs> it's remarkably sparse. Right? You mentioned that, that's yeah. why I'm. And so I assume we're going to get that in another session. This, arising from that is how are we coming on the issue of um, uh, bylaw enforcement? 
because I thought we were going to connect those. And, and the problem was we don't have the, the infrastructure mechanism that we were moving towards. We don't yet have the infrastructure mechanism that the, that the new, uh, it's not, it's called the Provincial Offenses Act. It used to be called the Summer Conviction Act. Right, called. and we have, uh, we have a couple presentations right. coming up on that. Prairie Mount uh, Prairie. Goodbye, Yeah, so we've invited two groups to come and speak sometime soon. So the, the, the intention would be for them to do it rather than have our own forces? Well, to, for them to give us their idea of, of a contract possibly. Um, our own forces who would like to have. I worked with the union, we discussed it, and uh, they're willing to allow the fire chief limited ability to carry out bylaw while we uh, work out our handy van driver bylaw, all these different things. Okay. Yeah. Council Morio. Um, just to follow up, I think there was there's two there was two issues there that I think that uh, the first one was what the administration answered was the presentations on uh, going forward on this the staffing and how bylaws actually being done. And then there was the other part where there was the uh, municipal enforcement bylaw is already passed uh, first reading. Mm -hmm. It went to one cow uh, meeting, I don't believe here, but I believe I've, it's going to come again for more discussion so that it can proceed to second and okay, right, reading. Yeah. Um, so it's done. Uh, you should have a copy of it sent to you already. Because um, I know you had mentioned that you had some, because there's still some tweaking to go between from what was in there to what our current bylaws are. Like, so, is, it, is it in all that? Because I can find it. Should it be there. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't open all that from. I'll find you the link. It, it, it's in there. So, uh, but it's going to come back either okay. probably next week or the next Cal meeting for uh, okay. another review at the Cal meeting before we send it to second readings. So. Okay. Thank you, Councillor White. Cool. Councillor Delarie. The, the, from the protective services report, the two fires that were on the third and fourth of January, the cause shavings. What, what does that? What does that mean? The the shavings in the walls. Yeah. Councilor Morio, want to answer that? Um, those those three fires there on the third, the the wood stove was the initial fire, and <coughs> it flared up twice after they had departed. So uh -huh. so, back instead of just years ago yeah. both like a wood fire they pretty much destroy the building rip it all apart now they go into like a minimal damage like uh, so that you don't have like one thousand dollars fire damage ten thousand dollar firefighter damage um, but during that night it, it, it flared, back, it up. flared mm -hmm. back up within the wall so they had to respond back to that same original incident twice during that night okay so, yeah um, i do so, remember that so. hmm. But that was it. But that wall in that shed was wood shavings versus fiber and or fiberglass insulation. It was in the shed. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Seven point three. Councilors' reports. We'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. You missed. Uh, Seven two two. Oh, I did do. Sorry, my apologies. Seven two two. No, we did that. <coughs> Just to protect the services, right? Oh, yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read it again. You had in the wrong place. Okay. Um, resolved that the January two thousand twenty Solander Handy Transit Van report be received. As information moved by every manager with Tony, seconded by Councillor Ray. Discussion on Councillor Gray. You have to imagine. Well, I, I, I'm declaring that I have a personal interest in this, but how close are we to dealing with that? The issue of having somebody on staff or having that farm over or whatever. Did you ever watch Get Smart? Yes. That's so close. We're that close. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know. Just, I knew what you meant. Yeah, we're not. So. Okay. Well, we're, we're working on it uh, diligently. Yeah. Actually, we're discussing that with the union tonight. So. Okay. All in favor? It's carry. <clears throat> Okay, council report. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, the only other meeting since our last council uh, meeting that we did have, I had a Valley in the Mountains 
tourism meeting um, and that is um, the the group is getting together and uh, getting some legs under them where they're going to function as a as a group instead of um, I guess in the in the past the way it was so they do have uh, a budget being presented although that funding is from rise they're gonna they want to move ahead in in terms of looking looking on their own standing on their own so uh, positive things out of valley in the mountains other than that that's the only meeting i had it was valentine's day this past weekend happy valentine's day to everybody that's all i have okay council morio uh, a couple things uh last week we had our committee of the whole meeting um then last Friday, uh, we had a meeting as council with uh, Minister Peterson. Um, we brought forward a number of issues uh, with crime, crime, uh, some logging issue licenses, and healthcare issues that uh, he's going to take back to his uh, co-workers in uh, Winnipeg to hopefully address, get us some in-face meetings with uh, the appropriate ministers. And today I attended the uh, opiate methamphetamine presentation put on by uh, the business consortium. It was a very good presentation. Uh, well, the topic he nailed it right on the head on the, the data that he had. Um, some uh, very good food for thought for a lot of people that uh, are not part of the emergency services um, organizations um, as to what the reality is out there. Um, so that's so it was probably very from what I gather humbling for a lot of people that were in, in attendance to hear what some of those uh, him uh, Corey guest and Neil Ives had to present this morning so hopefully we can uh, work forward as a community uh, moving forward to address some of those issues and that's all okay thank you Councillor Frieda um, <clears throat> I had two community care meeting on the 10th, and then there's a training section on the 6th that I went to. They're trying to teach me what community care is all about, and it gets quite into it. <clears throat> uh, thank you for whoever put the request on the town page for the communities in bloom to adopt a flower bed. I've already had two takers. So thank you. Hopefully more will come forward. Um, I don't know who's into curling, but at our provincial stick curling, it was uh, provincial and uh, two guys from Swan River won it, Jim Webster and Barry Tall, and they get to go to Regina to represent Manitoba. So congrats to those guys. Nice. Uh, I also was at the opiate slash meth meeting today, and I don't mind telling you it scared the heck out of me. I have grandchildren who are almost teenagers, and I'm thinking, man, they're going to be right in the middle of all this, and hopefully we've taught them not to even experiment with any of this stuff. Uh, the gentleman that did the presentation was very, very good. He was very sincere, and... Uh, Neil also was, uh, he's quite a guy. He's right out there with all that's happening. And it was a very good presentation. I hope everybody gets to see it on the YouTube. Thank all you, right. Jeremy, for doing that. <clears throat> I think we'll have that video on our town page, correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gray. Um, well. Happy uh, Valentine's Day, I forgot. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but sure. <laughs> then, you know, if you're going to that, that's fine. Um, it's nice to be back. I'm sorry to have missed so long. Um, I do feel a little out of the loop somewhat. I, I didn't have, I had access to all kinds of stuff, but I didn't have access to um, all that. And um, I've already expressed this to administration, but um, we absolutely have to have a different process for um, attendance when you're not in Swan River because it was um, there were a whole bunch of issues one was we had a meeting that didn't anticipate which caused its own share of problems for me um, and then I couldn't hear and that was particularly frustrating so um, that's the first thing and, and 
is part of my ongoing wine. That's one of them. And the other is the strap land piece, which I'll come to. I, I do want to laud a couple of things. Um, settlement services, uh, we alluded to it before, so I'm not going to belabor it, but they have done amazing things. They are, um, I, I, I mean, they, they're basically going to be operational with full time people here in, in La Paw. We are doing uh, amazing things in Swan River for um, settlement services. Um, I think we made a spectacular decision on the ice. I've heard nothing but great things. I've watched a couple of things, and, and you can even see it in the way the ice is cleared and the, it freezes properly in lots of time. So um, I think we did a fantastic job there. And I think it's, it's going to be a, a solution we can live with for a considerable period of time. And I think economically, we know we're going to have to live with it for a period of time. I remind people that on the weekend of the 13th, 14th, and 15th, the Bantam uh, AAA Provincials are going to be in town, and they're going to be scouts from um, both the WHO and the, some other bigger time scouts and agents, um, along with provinces from across the teams from across the prairies, uh, across the province. I think we need to look potentially at what we can do to assist uh, with that. I, th I think uh, that team has been in contact with Patty and with new recreation director and so I think there are some things we may they may ask for us to do as a community we should certainly support that um, they're feeling pretty comfortable with what support they've already gotten I have to say um, we have a Swan Valley Recreation Commission meeting coming up uh, it's been interesting to watch uh, the other municipalities pass uh, resolutions saying well we can go and look um, and, and as you can read between the lines how the, those are sort of worded that or at least I'm reading, that, that we may have a tougher sled on that. Um, and we'll see um, how that goes. Um, I, uh, I, I want to thank um, Mr. Poole. He came and rescued me. Um, I didn't get the email that said the meeting was canceled, so I waited outside until the very last minute and said, well, I better go in and set up. I came in and with my clumsy hands, I couldn't stop the alarm. And then once it started, I couldn't stop it worse. <laughs> and finally, Derek came and saved me. So I just came in here and sat in the quiet, well, not that quiet, ringing every so often, um, until Derek rescued me. Uh, but we'll see how that plays out. I think that has to happen fairly. We have to actually get to some decisions on whether we're going to go ahead with some analysis pretty quickly. If we don't, I think we need to be realistic that we're going to have to, as a town, um, Either people are on or they're not on. That's it, it's going to be as simple as that. And I, I feel that pretty much across the board. Um, I, I've got a, three meetings of pent up things, so you know I have, I'll have to deal with it. Um, I, I was encouraged when I saw Mr. Pearl's letter to us that um, at the that the meeting on rise that we seem to have reached a settlement. I'm, I'm not as encouraged when I find that one of our colleague, one of our partners, has now defeated the resolution that was agreed to. And so... Um, Did they I, not table that? No. I think um, Swan Valley West voted um, entirely against, well, all but one councillor voted entirely against um, the resolution to go ahead, that they weren't prepared to do the three-year commitment. And so I don't know how that plays out, because I think other... I, Mountain was on board, I think we're on board, but I think Minnetonis was contingent on everybody being in. And so I don't know how that plays out. Minnetonis passed the resolution. They passed the resolution, but I understood the debate was that everybody's in, we might as well be in. So I, I don't know if, if Swan Valley West now not being in changes things. Um, I, I firmly believe our position is, accurate, is, is right, which is you're either in for three years or you're not. Because we can't go back, we cannot, and I don't care who's on that, on that board. Um, candidly, in terms of the recreation, RISE and other boards, I think we need to encourage more citizen. If we're going to go on with those, I think we need more citizens on those and less councillors. Um, but more importantly, we that board, whoever's on it, has to have a three-year commitment. Just as the Recreation Commission has to have a long-term commitment because you can't operate every year not knowing until March or, or April whether you even have funding. That is not a formula for success. Um, I assume we're going to have a, a long-term discussion amongst ourselves on the, what's been called the crime problem. I have some thoughts on it, obviously, and I shared some of them with the minister's assistant. Um, I'm not sure he understood entirely what I was saying. Um, I was very cryptic, but 
Uh, I think we need to talk about long and short term strategies, and but we don't probably don't need to do it in a public forum. Um, so I don't know when we're doing that. Uh, I do want to talk about dolphin corrections. Uh, most of you know that um, by May, the first of May, the correctional facility there will be completely closed. So people from here will go to Brandon or the Paw, more likely Brandon, because the Paw is already filled with people from Thompson, um, or to Milner Ridge, which is what's six hour drive, um, which is fine. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not really that worried about that. There are some issues about about how that plays out, but it will be a, a pain in the ass, I think, for um, policing because they now will not be able to simply phone the sheriff and say, come get these guys. It will be a very problematic thing and it will be problematic for uh, all kinds of issues um, going forward. It will impact our ability to address those issues. Um, I think, and I think that community may want us to have some, to some, some support. So, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to ask if you can contact the mayor of the, of the town of Dolphin and ask for that input, and then we can, as a council, talk about whether we want to be supportive, depending on what they want. Um, which brings me to the last thing before I get to my, my one little rant. Um, have we moved forward with the cancellation of the? water agreement with Swan Valley West? No. Because I thought we passed that. Well, we discussed it. We, we discussed it. We discussed it. There's not been a resolution. Okay. So can we at the next <clears throat> meeting put that on the agenda? Because I actually do want to talk about it. Now, whether, whether we talk about it in with <coughs> all the other things, because I, I view them as related. Uh, I don't I don't think the state county is manual where you can pick and choose. You can say, oh yeah, well, we're a little bit in here. We're not in there. But others have different views, I think, and we should debate that. Which brings me to the last thing. We have five items, yes, five, for, and some of them are close to my personal heart, um, but uh, for grants on this agenda. And I don't know if we have a policy or a process, um, but I'm uncomfortable with us. Again, we're, you know, we're in February without our budget, and, I'm, and we, we're still working on a strap plan. I'm uncomfortable with us getting and approving grants until we have a process where we know why we're granting stuff. Because there are things that are apparently, to me, conflicting, or, or at least competing. And, and whether we should approve each or all of them, um, I, I think shouldn't be an ad hoc decision. There should be a process where we, where we have a, a, where it's part of our strategic plan, where it says this is why we're doing this, because it'll fit this model, it'll do that. And, and so I'm, I'm I'm concerned that we have, at some point we talk about that and develop that process or policy. And in fact, most grants should be relatively easy to do in the sense of, of uh, if they fall within a certain scope and, and so on. I would, you know, I don't know that we as a council need to be doing all our donations, but maybe we do. I think the municipal act has some issues of difficulties. Anyway, those are the issues I have for this part of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, reply to some of them, but um, with uh, RISE and what you're talking about with the, uh, the board of the re on the resolution from one municipality, I have actually called all the Reeves yesterday and asked to have a meeting with them. We need to talk, some of us need to have a, an ongoing discussion, and so I'm hoping that uh, they will all come together. I've already been speaking with two of them, so I need to speak with one more and hopefully we can come together and, and have a discussion about that. Um, crime, our next cow, we know that this is something that's a top priority for us right now, so definitely we will do that at our next cow. <clears throat> um, the Dauphin Jail, definitely I will be contacting the mayor. I have actually spoke to some other people about it already. The water agreement, will bring that up at our, maybe at a cow meeting, we'll have further discussion about it. Sure. And that. And then as far as the grants or, or if we're talking about donations, I believe that council does have a resolution that we do not that forbid us for doing donations. Okay. But we can have a discussion about that further. <clears throat> okay. Councillor not grants, not grants, donations. Uh, <laughs> Councillor White. Reports. Some I'm thinking this is sliding away from reports what we just did. Uh, I had, the, I had the privilege of helping out uh, 
Lou Taylor and, and uh, Brian Hunter, and then I think about, uh, I appreciate a, a letter perhaps from yourself, uh, Mr. Mayor, for those people who have volunteered their time, their money, and their skidoos to groom the three trails we have, two trails we have locally, and uh, it, it's a commitment to our community I think we have to appreciate. Uh, the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center had a, a bannock dinner, and I think a wonderful place for our community to get together from all, all dimensions, having every other Friday, I believe, and uh, I appreciate their hosting those things. I went to an LP SAC meeting where they have committed to $30 million plus to put in a new press with their, to keep their 600 employees uh, working. And we, uh, we stress that uh, to a significant degree with uh, Minister Peterson, I might add. The cow meeting where crime was talked about at length, uh, specifically to numbers and where they were going and how they were getting there, and that was a good meeting for all of us also. I also attended the Concerned Citizens of North Parkland, and they're actually chatting, I think is the way to describe it, the possibility of a local entrepreneur building that building uh, that they believe they need. I don't believe they got the application in a period to apply for those 100 beds. I'm pretty sure I'm right that. Uh, then uh, I had the privilege of attending the Sabbath meeting with uh, your worship and uh, the administrative staff and uh, I thought it was a very positive meeting where we talked about economic development, recreation, sport fish, commercial fish and crime and the CT scan so uh, a very worthwhile trip up there. Then I had three meetings with Minister Peterson on the day he was here but the, the Swan Valley uh, fish guys were, were fish which is certainly related to our community recreational and economically and uh, the CT and the crime things came up again had a brief meeting with yourself, sir, and yourself, Mr. Uh, Morio, with Francis Chartrand of the Manitoba Media Federation with the possible involvement in land in our community. I also went to the meth uh, amphetamine presentation and I was nauseous after I left. I was thinking about uh, all the young people and old people who are falling to the dark side and that stuff. And I think the most important message I got is to talk to the people. What is their message? What is their story? Why are they doing this stuff? What happened? And, it, it touches all ages, all socioeconomic classes, all ethnic groups. So it's a powerful uh, drug. It's pretty, pretty scary. And uh, as you mentioned, they did a video of it, which will be available on the Town of Swan River website. And I would ask us to consider, so the seat of maybe getting Mr. Ives to come here and do a 10 or 15 minute presentation. Neil Ives being a, a nurse who does all this uh, harm reduction activities. Sharps containers obviously are a big part of that today, and I'm not sure where we are with the town, whether that's a responsibility or not, but how can it not be a part of our responsibility? And the open house, which we've alluded to, and I'm not sure where it is, but I know I read something from an RCMP report where the RCMP and the business consortium were going to plan to have an open house meeting. I, I'm, I don't want to assume anything. I'm hoping the town will be part of the organizational team there. Because I don't think it's appropriate that the business consortium, the RCMP, do that independent of the town. I think we would want to be part of that organizational group so we too can uh, be involved. I think it's about 10 meetings, and I give you the brief. Thank you. Busy <clears throat> time. Councilor Gloria. Well, as I was uh, out of town for last meeting, I have a couple extra weeks to report on. Um, 27th had the RISE meeting in Minnetonas. I left there pretty optimistic. Every Councillor in attendance raised their hand in favor. I thought we had an agreement that we we're going to go back to our councils, that we had something that we had, we had worked on. We debated for a couple of hours to get to where we got to. And now the concerns that I'm hearing weren't raised at that meeting, so I'm very surprised to have heard these concerns. But hopefully we can work past them because if we don't, I, I committed to you guys, because this is another thing you can take, take to the bank, I committed to you guys, the, the six of you guys around the table, that I would not be putting my hand up for a, for a 2020 budget that did not include some sort of long-term commitment from all our partners on RISE. Either includes a long-term commitment from all our partners, and I'll, I'll, vote, I'll vote in favor of it, or else I'm not voting in favor of the budget if there's no long-term commitment, because it's just a waste of money. So that, that I, my position on that won't change. Uh, we need we need to have a more than a one year, so we're not doing the same exercise in futility year after year. So I hope uh, your your summit with uh, 
the other uh, leaders of council can, can be fruitful. Uh, the next night we had uh, internal meeting regarding the budget. I, it's looking good. I'm very pleased to, to, to see what we saw and I'm going to be even more pleased once we get the, our next iteration that has even even more ability to either pay down debt, put into reserves or things like that. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, the, what further uh, uh, efficiencies department heads could find. Um, then on the Thursday, uh, we had a meeting with the 4-H group regarding a potential fundraiser for the uh, 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 a do uh, donation towards the CT scanner. I think that's good. The, the more we get the public involved in this, the more uh, the, the more political pressure there will be for, for this for this thing. So I, I think this is nothing but a good thing, and I'm I'm uh, I'm glad to see that uh, there's community groups that that have this on their radar, and I think it's going to be a good thing. Uh, Last week, uh, we had the meeting with the uh, Minister Peterson. Um, we brought up uh, our three main concerns, which were crime, uh, healthcare, uh, including the CT scanner, and uh, and issues with uh, lumber rights in our surrounding area for our major employers. So uh, I think it was productive. We didn't get any concrete answers on anything, but you, you never do. That always either comes later in the form of a cryptic letter, letter that you can't decide is a yes or a no. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully they heard our concerns and they'll take them seriously because uh, I think they need to. I think the, the Swan River Valley needs to. The province needs to know that the Swan River Valley does exist and it does have concerns um, that need to be addressed. Uh, and that is it for me. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I guess for myself, I was with a lot of these uh, different meetings and, and gatherings that we had in the last few uh, weeks, but uh, with Chief Janai and, and, um, and Councillor Chartrand last week, that was, uh, as Councillor White mentioned, that was a, a good meeting. Uh, out of that also, we talked about the airport, and there was a lot of discussion about uh, beaver dams and so on as well, so if that I can remember. But we did talk about crime and, and it being also... Uh, a number one concern also with uh, with their community as well. <clears throat> the meeting with uh, Minister Peterson, as Councillor Delory had mentioned as well, is that uh, he'll take back some of those concerns and hopefully they can get a better licensing uh, set up for LP for long term, that's for sure, and for Spruce products. And he will uh, also bring forward our concerns with the CT scanner to the Minister uh, Friesen, as far as crime goes, definitely he's going to try to nudge uh, Mr. Collum to have a meeting with us, which I've been contacting them, so they're getting it from all angles right now. So I'm sure we'll hear from Minister Collum uh, sometime soon. As mentioned, I, we also met with uh, Mrs. Uh, Chartrand as well uh, with MMF, uh, some property that they're interested in. So. I think that there's going to be some good economic development that might be seen down the pipe here shortly. So a good, another good partner. Uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, we had a meeting and we actually had the, the Lions group from the valley, uh, all corners of the valley uh, present when they had their unveiling of their plaque for um, cataract surgery. And some of the information there that the uh, Lion um, uh, Hal Stuck had mentioned that they have 41 member lions in Swan River, 20 in Bozeman, and 54 in Manitoba. So they have a, a very uh, significant uh, membership throughout the whole valley. Uh, with the um, uh, the, uh, the surgeries, the, the cataract surgery program that they brought to the valley, it was interesting to hear Lion Hal Stuck tell the story about how he was so insistent on having that. Uh, program in Swan River because the province was going to put it in Doff and and he said no way you know we're going to have it in Swan River they got money from Lions and a whole other organizations including the Swan Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation and here we are today after what was it April 2011 was when they opened and so far they've done 2100 surgeries in Swan River since 2011. So just another good example of good partners with a good 
uh, volunteers that make things happen for our community. I also had the, probably the best part of the last two weeks, or partly anyways, was uh, February is I like to read, or love, I love to read month. And I was a special guest reader at the uh, Ecole South School for the kindergarten and grade three classes. So that was pretty, um, pretty special. And I learned the difference between ma mère and mon mère. So one is my mother and one is my mère. And it sounds very similar, so uh, that was kind of special. And they gave me this nice little pin for coming and reading to them. So they're a pretty interesting group of young people that are learning as they go along. So they had lots of questions and questions about everybody here that sits around the table as well. So <clears throat> brought out only good things. So, And that's it for me. So. Um, We'll move on to the town manager's report here. So 7.4, result of the January to February 2020 town manager's report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Anything to? No, not really. It's, it's all right. Uh, standard goings on in town and what's. Okay. Thank you for the report. All in favor? It's carried. 8.1. Resolved that Hugh Hunt be appointed the or appointed municipal noxious weed inspector for the town of Swan River from March 1st, 2020 through February 28, 2021. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Gary. Well, I seconded and moved that. Can we at some point move that to the way we do other hirings? We just approve the position or whatever. We can't. We have to do it. This is the municipal act. Under, under the, under got the got act, we I have to it, appoint one every year. Result that Hugh Hunt be authorized to attend the 2020 Municipal Weed Issues Seminar being hosted so, by the Manitoba Weed Supervisors Association in Carberry on March the 18th, 2020. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Well, we'll stress with uh, Mr. Hunt the importance of perhaps dealing with our with weeds. I mean, it's great to have a weed inspector and, and somebody to Always go to the job. seminars, but there's gotta be some, some sort of action that we can take and whether that is I don't know what the answers are, but hopefully he can come back with some suggestions of weed control. Councillor Gray, I know you got something burning. I, I do because it's not his job. It's his job to find us for not doing our job. That's really that's the irony is we're hiring a person who presumably, if he does his job, is going to come to the town and say you can't let dandelions run wild in every park in town um, because that's what's happening. So he's not going to do it, but somebody has to deal with that problem because it's brutal. I, I spent like well, this last summer, the summer before, cleaning my entire yard. It was just perfect by the end of the year. And and I woke up last spring and and I was away for a few days. I came back and I had more dandelions there than I'd ever had in my entire life. It was crazy. <laughs> Councillor White. I guess I can move to 12. The devil's advocate for yeah. nothing. In the uh, honey being one of the, the key invertebrates that keep our world functioning, relies significantly on dandelions. The they, 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 they do. Mr. Crow, I just wanted to point out that uh, uh, Manitoba laws are I know. restrictive on weed control. So. And, and on that, actually, the province had talked about, the government had talked about actually rescinding that, but they haven't done that yet. So I guess, Mr. Gray, if you, or Councillor Gray, maybe, you know, contact the minister and see where they're, sure. they're on that. So. Well, I'm, I'm certainly <laughs> going to do that if you want me to. It's <clears throat> ridiculous. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the Swan River Handy Transit Van draft financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2019 be approved and the independent auditors report thereon 
be accepted as presented. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4 resolved that the Council of the Town of Swan River support the administration's application for funding from the 2020 Flood Preparation Preparedness Program to enhance the municipality's capacity to, to prepare for the 2020 spring flooding or future flooding. Moved by. In spite of the fact that we've never had a flood. Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, while I applaud the provincial government for actually providing some flood preparedness uh, program funding for preparedness, um, I do need to express my disappointment that with the tight timelines of having to have it in by the end of February for um, materials to be purchased before March 31st, where a majority of the councils uh, in the province have not even done their annual budgets yet. Um, it leads me to speak that there might be um, sort of looking for ulterior it. motives. Ulterior motives as to who's getting this funding. If you have to have the stuff already bought, um, so it's it's not a very open transparent where I could see where because you don't want to go buy something for if you may not have the funds to do it, but you can buy it if you have a a grant to do it. So it's, uh, um, I just need to express my disappointment in the provincial um, government for it. It's the way it's being rolled out. Like it, it's, it's a fantastic program, but the way it's being rolled out is not appropriate in my mind. So should we do something? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. No, I threw you to the previous speaker. Should we do something about that? Should we send a letter? Should we, or should we just whine amongst ourselves? I would be opposed of the town sending a letter expressing our concern. Um, they're hearing it from us from all avenues, so what's one more letter of expressing okay. it? Because uh, I don't think we're the only council that's going to go in, uh, yeah. what's up with this. Like, um, it's not very. Okay. So then we will get that put together and, uh, and send that off, Councillor DeLaurier. Was there any flood preparedness things that we were going to be buying this year, like sandbag, how's our sandbag supply? Oh, yeah. Delineators, all kinds of public works stuff that we'll be using for flood preparedness. Yes. <coughs> oh, was there stuff we had we planned? <laughs> <laughs> was there stuff that we had planned on purchasing in 2020 at all? Was yeah, yeah. There's trailers, delineators, signs. Yeah, what you call it? Mini X. Yeah, or. Uh, the culprit okay. car. Probably not the mini X. Well, if there is stuff, we should purchase it between these dates and and that's the plan. Yeah. And put in an application. Yeah, we have a list. Okay. Already compiled and ready to go. Okay. Maybe, maybe we should hold off on our letter to see until we yeah. see if we get so get the funding get the funding for this. <laughs> but I, but I think like. That stuff that we already com like potentially committed in our capital budgets and stuff that we we're going to purchase right. anyway, that, that they're small ticket items. There, there might be larger ticket items that organizations may have looked at in their front preparedness, like backup generators or tiger dams or whatever that we may not have specifically used it because we're not much, but there's other municipalities that yeah. could do it. Um, it's just the timeline. Like, unless they're going to be the closing dates the 28th of February, and by the 10th of March, they're going to announce. If you're approved, and then you got 20, 20 days, days to go buy it, which I highly doubt is going to happen. Um, so, like right now, we're forced to look at what we have already purchased or have planned, uh, and then potentially doing capital purchases on an stuff that's in our capital plan that's not even approved yet. Which, what well, I presume, that's great. I'm sorry. I presume that the equipment we're buying has, in addition to flood preparation alternate use is available to them. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Like a mini excavator? Yes. <laughs> Whatever, I'm we leaving it to your guys' head. I, I, it's, it's, we're okay. waiting for the question. So, further discussion, Mr. Crow? I did tell the director that in the event, the unlikely event that a flood happens, the mini exit trailer needs to be close to where the flooding is happening in case cameras are around. 
Yes. That would be a good idea. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.5. Resolve that the Valley of the Mountains Tourism 2020 membership in the amount of $1,500 be approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor um, uh, Delore, then Councilor Morio. So, our, our uh, membership fee that's based on per capita amount? Or how? Uh, you can answer that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's just a flat fee for the tourism guide. So basically, it's just a, a page um, page in the book that they print. That's all it's ever been. Every municipality is the same okay. same price for one page in the tourism okay. book. Council Morio. Um, so I guess there's two points there now. So I'll carry on with there. Uh, since this year is the second year of the printing of the book, so We've paid last year's fees, which is bought the books already. Um, and this year is only an insert going into change. So if the, our fee is to pay for the tourism guide, why would the fee be so high um, if we're just putting in the insert? Like I could see a higher, or a, like even asking for an increase if you're going into a printing year. But if it's just an insert year, you'd think, why would they be requesting so much more funds? unless they're building um, an account for the pay. So, it would have been probably so. wise to have somebody here from the Valley of the Mountains. Well, I, I, I'm part of that board. Um, I'm not, I was under the impression that it was a yearly fee that was paid by the municipalities um, for the books. Right, yeah. and, and like I, like I used to sit on that and like that was the major expense every two years was the books so this year is in a low expense year so why why is their budget going up and why are they pulling seventy five hundred dollars out of reserve um according to their reserve from the bank account and then still asking us for a 250 dollar increase from last year's levy councillor gray I have a number of points. The first is I, I suspect that what they do is they equalize it over the period of time so that it's really three thousand dollars, but they don't send us a three thousand dollar bill one year and a zero, they send it fifteen or twelve hundred dollars and they project forward. I, I suspect that because I think they send the same thing to rise, which brings me to my actual point. We're we're not actually through the process of strat planning and, and budgeting and so on, but at some point this is the kind of thing that we should be sending to or whatever, and we shouldn't, uh, council shouldn't necessarily be um, involved in it because it's really about other things, in my view. And so, uh, unless unless there's some other process, um, but uh, for this time, I don't see what our alternative is. We've always supported it, and it is um, a relatively modest amount to pay towards tourism, which is a fairly significant part of the economy of the town. So. Uh, while I'll support this year, I have to say, if for next year, I would rather us have a, a totally different process for those kind of memberships, which are really um, donations in, or grants, which are donations. My whole, I would much rather we have a, a different process for doing that because I, I, I don't know why we would pick and choose between groups. But anyway, uh, for this year, I'm certainly prepared to support the resolution. I can speak a little more to that. Uh, it is, um, you're right, it's all, the, the, the funny is over the two years for a one pager, but it's billed out every year instead of being billed once. Every second year it's broken down between the, the two years. Um, I lost my, Train of thought. What was the last? I forgot my train of thought. Um, Next point was that we should actually get out of this business and have somebody else doing it. Yes, and I think and the budget is just enclosed in here for I think council to to take a look. But I don't think that um, that should be for um, for us. I think that that's their budget and that's. But it's just showing councils what what tourism looks like. They're taking money out of the bank account for in initiatives. 
um, for staffing as well to help um, the other groups in town, like the snowmobile clubs, the fishing, fishing enhancement, all of those kind of groups, um, and to do some tour or, uh, tourism souvenirs and those type of things within the in the building. I think they're going to be very successful in what they're doing, and I strongly support the tourism this tourism invoice for sure. Councilor Doria. So so they're looking at hiring a staff person or they've already hired a staff person? No, they don't have any staff person for tourism. The, I shouldn't say that. Tourism staff person is currently being funded by RISE. So RISE hired in the past, had their EDO and then a tourism person. So the, the funding is still from RISE. Um, the request will go to rise as well, but they wanted to stand on their own two feet with their own budget um, in terms of looking after the tourism side and, and having the EDO and the economic development look after economic development and not tourism. So kind of like the same like doctor recruitment where doctor recruitment stepped, stepped away and then they just focused on economic development and that's the same thing that the tourism side is wanting to do currently getting funding from rise but i think that in the future that they would seek um, funding specifically from the municipalities and not from rise thus reducing the budget to rise but separating separating it out to tourism okay so the the rise request this corresponds to i remember uh, maybe about a year ago, the four priority or the four project areas that Rise is going to be focused on. I think that so this That's is the, exactly this is this yeah. the money that, is that the, comes from here. So this won't. I, we don't know that. I mean, it, it's what Rise would have given. That's how Rise would have funded. Yes, I, I, I guess. I guess where I'm going with this is Rise isn't going to ha ask for an, an increase of ten thousand dollars to pay for this in, in addition to the the money that they had set not at all so this is the this is the money that was allo allocated in the rise budget for tourism um, but now tourism is just taking that money and showing their own using that money and showing their own budget with it okay I, I, I like that then that it does show that the person who's doing this it's, it's a bit more transparent in my mind actually yes um, if this is where they're actually working on that's um, exactly it. it it doesn't feel like you're giving money to rise and and this person's not really doing rise work now they'll be doing okay. so so the idea is that the rise and whatever is being funded to directly economic development it's going to be strictly economic development this will be strictly tourism Okay. With the hopes that rise continues to get their funding, of course. But I, I guess precisely. I see they're pulling from a from a reserve this year as well. I guess just I, I don't. I'm, that's fine, and and I see they may have some one time expenses of what website set up and that kind of thing. So, you know, I guess just to caution them that that reserve will run out. Looks like in about two years at the rate they're going. So they may want. They're going to have to come up with a, a more sustainable budget. Yes, and you're absolutely right. And I think that there was a thought of taking from reserves and not showing reserves because I think that's gotten other organizations in trouble. In trouble. So I think the idea was to reduce a little bit out of reserves, maybe ask for a little more from the funding in the future. You're still on. Okay, uh, one last question. The, uh, in a year when they print the guide, What's what's that cost? I want to say that it was eighteen thousand dollars, eighteen to twenty. I don't have the that number. Do they get some other grant because the invoices to municipalities wouldn't cover that then? If they're only no, ads. so it's, so it's the oh, ads. oh the ads okay the ads from the and so so the revenue is higher in those years. Yes, okay. that's correct. Okay, I copy you. But then to sh to continue to have revenue, that's why they broke the. The municipal, the, municipal, amount, yeah. the municipal one up okay. being billed out every year. Okay. okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas Richard George Walker was a resident of the town of Swan River, 
And whereas the town of Swan River has the opportunity to express its appreciation for the unique efforts and abilities of Dick Walker, not just as a highly respected local philanthropist, but also as a Swan Valley resident who truly exemplified? Exemplified. And you were reading letters who? missing. Oh yeah, I was going to say there's some letters missing there. Exemplified what it takes to be a volunteer committed to supporting numerous initiatives, projects, and events throughout the Swan River Valley, who has spent countless hours with organizations such as Ducks Unlimited Canada, the Rotary Club of Canada, the Swan Valley Agricultural Society, and more. All in successful efforts that have made a difference for everyone living in and visiting our valley. Therefore, be it resolved that the First Street North between First, First Fourth Avenue North and PTH 10 North have the honorary name Dick Walker Trail and all current signs be fitted with an additional decorative street blade. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor and Tony. Discussion? Yeah. Who, who would raise their hand first? Go ahead. Um, I think this is a great thing. I do think, though, that we um, should use his his full name, Richard Walker, um, in the event. I, I mean, uh, he's got other, he's got another road named after him in the RM, Richard Walker Way. Um, I think that it would just be nice that we have the same same name, both in the RM and the town of Swan River, recognizing the same individual. Okay. Uh, Councillor Gloria, the Councillor White, and Councillor Gray. Kate, I'm I'm against this. I'm, I'm going to vote for it, but I'm against these in general. I, I I think Dick Walker deserves to have an actual road named after him, not an honorary road. I think we should be named like I know, and I know it's hard. You can't change a street that name that people already live on. That's just a pure inconvenience. But we've got some new streets coming up that. You know, even when we when we did this for Albert Chartrand, uh, it's a cop out. I think we should be naming actual streets after these people. These are important people in our community. We need we should to give them a. I, I would like to see an actual Walker Way or a, a you know a Chartrand Crescent or something of that nature. That I, I I and I understand the significance of this street. I mean that's where he lived. Um, to, to have this as the decorative one, the, the what is it called, not decorative one, uh, honorary street, but I, I would like to go a step further to see an actual street named after after uh, Dick Walker. Okay, Councillor White. <clears throat> well, firstly, this is, Mr. Walker comes along once every hundred years of individual that commits so much to, to the valley as a whole. Uh, we, most of us realize what that's about. I appreciate so much what you said, Councillor. I'm not sure we have streets coming up that have no name yet. Yeah, we do. Uh, I, that's the reason why the other name isn't put on here, because I, I still haven't heard whether we can do that cheaply yet. So then I, I would hope we would approve this as is, understanding if, if we can do it legally the other way, the next option would be to the, your suggestion. So it's a fantastic. Uh, Recognition of a special person. Councillor Gray. I'm good for now. We can vote on this. Mr. Kroll. Could I suggest possibly having this tabled uh, until Derek gets some answers on, rather than putting the name forward and then have to reverse everything? Just suggesting that. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I think, in my opinion, Mr. Walker has contributed contributed phenomenal amounts to the community in many different ways, and I agree that a, that a name street would be much better. But I don't think that there's anything wrong with having more than one named after him, um, especially on the street that he lived, and which would just be an honorary street name. Which is two signs. I don't think. I don't think that we would. I. I won't. I would be in favor to to uh, to support this. I, I just think that perhaps we should just make the name change to coincide with the naming of the RM 
road that he already has. What did you just okay. say? So should, table it? Are you okay with Counselor tabling White? it until we find out of the other street? No, I, I, I'm i fine with having an honorary street and then in the future having a street. When that evolves? When that evolves. Okay, I can Counselor do that. I, I guess I can live with that too, but I'd like, uh, and I, th I think to go along with that, there there's maybe a couple of streets there that are coming up. We need to have, have some sort of a process for, for ha having, it, whether it's a, a yeah. How we, how we name streets. Yeah, in the, in the report I gave in the last meeting, the, I told council that I would provide a draft policy by October. Okay. For street naming. <clears throat> Councilor Fraser. Are you referring to out? Yeah, there we got about two or three streets coming up there in that development. I recall way back when we were going to do something about a Neely Street, because that's where Kelly used to live and he was a long time councillor and has since passed away and we have talked about him. So for throwing in names that we could maybe do, he is one of them. Neely, Walk or Way or whatever. Just a thought. Uh, I, Councilor Gray. I just want to speak in support of what our CAO has suggested. I, I think, I, I, I know Dick Walker, I think he's fantastic. He did more things for this community than almost anybody else. But I think we need to be thoughtful about how we do things, and and I'm not sure we want to have more than one street name, the same thing. That that's a formula for confusion, in my view. So I, I would really feel more comfortable if we tabled it. But if, if everyone else is against that, I, I can live with this. It's not that I'm opposed to it. It's just I would like us to do it in a thoughtful way, and I'm not sure that this is when we've gotten in trouble. It's because we've gone ahead because we felt. That the, that the idea was that the emotive motion of it was good, but we haven't necessarily thought through how it will have long-term consequences. But Go ahead. just in terms of that, an honorary street only lasts for a shorter period of time, correct? No, no. the resolution's passed. The, the signs are out there. It's forever. It's yeah. until the council Change. makes a resolution to take them down. Same as Veterans Way. Yeah. So. I don't do go ahead. Sir, I, w I wouldn't recommend uh, exactly as Councillor Grace said, I would not recommend changing it. If we decide on First Street North, it should it should stay on First Street North. It will be confusing and yeah, I, I guess I'd rather avoid confusion uh, on the public. I agree, I agree but um, so do we have the motion to table? Okay, table. okay so we have a motion to table. I'll second that. Okay, could, could I just ask for the second meeting of next month? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We'll have the answer for that question. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> 8.7. Well, so we have to vote on the motion to table, I think. It's not debatable, but I think we still have to pass the motion to table, don't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess we do. All right. So, uh, motion to uh, table by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Thank you. Result of the Town of Swan River contribute contribute $500 to the Junior Achievement Manitoba to help cover the cost of delivering programs to schools in the Town of Swan River for educating young people about business and financial literacy. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? So Councillor Delorey and then Councillor Morio. So we're now contributing money towards education, is how I read this. I mean, isn't that what the. And, I, and you know, I don't know how it works being a private school, but isn't that what the school division is for? I, I, I don't know why municipal dollars would go towards this. Councillor Morio. Um, I like it. There's, when I read this, there's a number of questions. Um, they're asking for $500 to cover the costs of delivering programs to the schools in the town of Swan River. So what schools are they talking about? Is it, I know they talk about the Community Bible Fellowship Christian School That's offered us, like they did a, a fundraising thing. But I don't see if they're, if that's the school they're talking about or all the schools. Um, it says right there that that's the only one this this year or whatever. That's what I received, took so out of it. 
with that sense of different. It says this winter community Bible fellowship Christian school offered a stronger together diversity in action programming reaching 11 grade seven and eights. Like to me, there's a lot of unanswered, there's a lot of questions here. Like, is it just that, or is this dealing with the school division where we're at as, and as council Glory says, are we funding things like that? I like the message that they're, they're trying to do achieve, but right now I can't support this based on a lot of this unanswered stuff as to what they're, they're talking about. And then how is it going to be delivered if it's just in the one school or the public schools or the private schools and whatnot? So, so this program is it's junior achievement um, I've taught I don't know six or seven of these courses already for Stacy um, for this program they're great programs offered to um, any <coughs> schools within your district um, they go to their programs that are um, that coincide with the curriculum of any any teaching class I've done grades three and four I've done um, I don't I don't even know there's I have so many that I've I have done I, I volunteer my time to do it they send you a package of material but any teacher can apply um, to be to get the program for their for their classroom um, and there was there the feedback that I've received from the teachers and the students is Phenomenal. I think it's a great program. Councilor Gray. Um, Junior Achievement is a spectacular program. Um, it's across North America. I endorse the, the, the idea that we should have uh, more of it. And so I don't speak against Junior Achievement, but I do speak against the resolution. For the reasons I raised with respect to Valley of the Mountains, it really is a matter of us connecting to what our main purpose is. And I'm not, uh, look, if, if they came to me as a business and said, could you give us a check for $100 and there's five business people here, we could fund it. But I, I really don't think it's the business of the town to fund this. And I especially don't think until we have a, a thoughtful process for deciding how we're gonna do these things that we should do it. I know there's another application coming up in a minute. I'm gonna excuse myself for the obvious reasons. Um, due to them, you know, connected to that particular organization, but I specific, like I said, I will vote against it, not because I don't agree with the project, but because I think it's not our core business, and until we get control of our core business, I don't think we should be spreading out, and I know it's only $500, it's just, it's the principle of doing it, and, and I've got the next two items, um, I would apply the same thinking. Okay. Even though, in one case in particular, Councillor White. So, Councillor, how do you differentiate voting for Valley in the Mountains, which you don't think is our core business? Mm -hmm. It should be that other post. And you voted for that one. Mm -hmm. This isn't our core business, but you won't vote for this one. How do you differentiate? I, I do. I, I can answer that. Okay. If you want, Mr. Mayor. Well, I, I, that's, that's fine. It's not appropriate, but I go ahead. So, I, I put on record my opposition to the Valley in the Mountains oh. one and said, because it had been funded last year, because of the way I understood the process, because of my involvement with RISE at being a two year sort of a cycle, uh, I agreed to fund it this year, but indicated I would not be voting for it next year. So I haven't been removed from the council or died or something. I would be voting against it because I think it's, we, I, I may or may not be, I should say it that way. And a junior achievement at some point, I may or may not be. If we decide that that's something we want to fund because it actually achieves our goals, then I think we should fund it. But we haven't got that kind of thoughtful process, and I think using resources, and so that's how I do it. It was I viewed the the the, the contribution to the Valley of the Mountains as part of it as a second part of a two part contribution. This is a brand new application, and I think until we have a clear picture of how it achieves our goals. We should not fund it. That's how. Councillor Gray, or sorry, Councillor White. Was that to believe that, that you have taught this program? Yes, I volunteer my time. So it's not a new program. In fact, it has been done before in the valley. Yes, how it was funded, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But um, I've done it. I don't know for four years, probably with um, with Stacy on Stacy from Junior Achievement. 
she calls upon um, the businesses within the community to talk about the courses for those students. They're there with the, with the, the, the teacher, but I've, I've had lots of fun teaching them. So hypothetically, that stretching a little could lead to better economic development when these young people learn about JA and how to do financing and business, which would help things like rise. Oh, absolutely. There's the, you, you talk about in the ones that I've talked about was everything from um, uh, how to what you do when you make, how you get money, how you spend money, and how the economic process is of that money within your community. Funded it in the past. I honestly couldn't tell you it was before. I wasn't on council last year, so I don't don't know if it came to municipal. Yeah. Well, so, so the point I think the point is is that like Councilor Gray said, there has the town of Swan River has not committed any dollars to this at all. And and Councilor uh, or Deputy Mayor Antonio is saying that you know, it's a good economic driver. Well, maybe that's something that RISE is, is part of economic development is, is looking at, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'll leave it at. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. For 8.8, for, uh, I will excuse myself. Okay. I'm not directly involved. No, in I was going to say you're not, but... Well, I'm not, but... Um, I think, you just feel better that well, way. Well, it, it seems to me self-evident that if I'm council for the Municipality Council, that it would be inappropriate for me to comment okay. or to even be part of the discussion. Fair enough. Okay, so resolved the Town of Swan River donate, question mark, to the Youth Empowerment Conference 2020 as the town of Swan River supports this worthwhile event. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion, Councilor Morio. Um, well, in the, in the resolution of the question mark, I know we can look at maybe something less, looking at their letter for something for their silent auction table, like something is in kind as that versus a monetary um, object. Swimming, and stuff swimming, that less, show, or swimming passes or something like that. Something, yeah, exactly, yeah. instead of a, uh, something where we can show support for that organization for this cause, but it's a non-monetary thing. Um, like or, okay, Dr. Mayor Wintoni. Just the non-monetary item that your swimming lessons, for example, is still, costs going to cost someone money whether or not it's an employee working or whether or not it's the pool being open nothing that we give a give to somebody is free nothing is monetary um and i guess to those counselors who don't didn't vote in favor of the last one i'm not sure how that you can differentiate one from the other and i'll leave it at that Councilor White. Whatever we do, I'm very much in favor of supporting it. Okay. Uh, we, we we don't have anything there, so I, I need uh, Council Morio. Can I make like a minute, donate an item for their side of the box, like change them? Mr. Crowley, could I Possibly suggest, passes. or it has been suggested, possibly uh, swimming passes or something like that? Pardon me? I'm just uh, swimming passes. Perfect. They're, they're, you know, it's yeah. not money, it's, it's something from the town. Absolutely. How, how many? Five. Five child passes. Okay, so donate five child swimming passes. Is that a day of a week pass? Or? Yeah, the daily passes. Daily passes. Okay, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I guess I should be clear on my stance is that I truly support this as well. Um, but I would like to suggest that if it's going to be five daily passes for this one, that we suggest that we are going to donate five daily passes to the Junior Achievement as well. I passed that already. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Can we bring in Mr. Uh, Councilor Gray, please?
Okay, uh, 8.9. Resolved that the Parkland Tourism 2020 membership fee in the amount of $1,300 be approved for payment. Moved by. I move to table this item. Uh, we haven't got it to the table yet. <laughs> but okay, can we just. I'll, I'll move to put the original okay. resolution right. on the table. Councillor, uh, they moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Okay. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I move to table this resolution. Okay. So we have a motion to table. Do we have a second there? Okay. Or do you want to speak? Yet? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, then we'll vote on that after. Okay, go ahead. I'm confused because, and I know at one time we paid our own Parkland Tourism uh, membership. And then, in my in my mind, I have, I have it stuck in my head, and I might be completely out to lunch. But didn't we lump it in with something else, and and either in Valley in the Mountains or somebody paid it on Rise. our behalf? Rise used to pay Valley in the Mountains did. Valley in the Mountains paid it on. So, so in the, was that included in the in the money that we paid them before? Like, how did that work? Can someone remind me how that all worked? Brian. Last year, in 2019, we received two uh, one invoice from Valley in the Mountains Tourism with one dollar value. That said, that was the 1250 for the uh, the Swan Valley Tourism Guide, and then there was another amount for Parkland Tourism. We voted to pay the par or the Swan Valley Tourism. We did not approve to pay the Parkland Tourism in 2019. Now, Valley in the Mountains completely separated themselves. We're not, they're not paying it on behalf of the municipalities. So Parkland Tourism is sending out their own bills and I vote to table this for further information that is not available at this time in regards to um, tourism in our area and not receiving proper funding from Parkland. So at this time, that is my reason for tabling and I it's not the video I think we should vote. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we have a motion to table, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? The table to the second meeting Same next meeting. month. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't we didn't vote. We did we? Yeah. All yeah. in favor? Yeah. Okay. I just had a question for we didn't support the parkland tourism last year no we did not in 2019 no. i just recall from us going to flintlon we had two books and this one was we were to, we paid but we're not in it so yeah. yes yeah it just um we, we we voted on it already so we'll okay. talk about this at our well, i'm just a little confused as to which okay. one we want <clears throat> Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General account checks number 25684 to number 25746 for a total of $126,441.30. Check number 25723 was voided. Payroll account checks number 4618 to 4624 for a total of $104,685.16. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Morio? Um, I guess it's check number 25693. It's part of the uh, visa payment. But, um, where did it go? It's at the bottom. Um, but it was the two, on, yeah, the town form and on call cell phone for three months for that valley. Um, what's that about? I guess the town form and they're the form and so <coughs> is one hundred percent paid by the town. Right, because he's not on the fifth. Yeah, he's he doesn't have the same deal as everyone else does. Gotcha. Forgot about that. Okay. Further discussion? <coughs> Deputy Mayor Check two five seven two three, February tenth, Big Boys Repair and Restoration for forty one hundred. It was voided and issued for revised in, or will be issued for revised invoice. <clears throat> that was for the, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, that was for the uh, um, expert to come up from Winnipeg to look at our whirlpool and see what the issues were and do some camera work and stuff. Um, 
he couldn't complete as much as he wanted to in his quote. So he's he's uh, sending us a, a redu reduced uh, price oh, wow. for that. So it'll be smaller, not bigger. So. Perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Both. It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the Town of Swan River Bylaw 15 2019 being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 6 2017, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds to upgrade the mechanical piping and pumping and fully replace electric, like, electrical components plus installation of additional monitoring and equipment at the 6th Avenue wastewater pump station located at 314 6th Avenue North. Be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolve, resolve that pursuant to Jeez. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have uh, committee negotiations, provincial health care and justice negotiations, and legal update. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Carried. Result of this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.